Imagine wandering around in a grocery store and you arrive at the produce section looking for a delicious sweet potato. Every time you enter the produce section, you get to be a judge in the sweet potato beauty contest. We often pick the prettiest sweet potatoes to take home with us, because in our minds, sweet potatoes that lack visual imperfection might be tastier. Do not feel bad, we're all guilty of these thoughts. It turns out that US consumers and processors prefer very regular symmetrical shapes and sizes when it comes to food. Think about how even eggs are sorted by size. Basically, at the supermarket, we always look for sweet potatoes that look something like this. But truly, the potatoes that we see in the packing lines are much different than the ones we see in our supermarkets. The potatoes do, that do not meet standard shapes and sizes at the packing line usually go to markets other than produce section, such as sweet potatoes for baby food. And if we look at what our fields produce, there are some very funny shaped potatoes that are just simply left in our fields to rot because there's not a market for them. Even though these two potatoes have the same exact high nutritional value, the unusual shapes and sizes become food waste at the source, leading to a decrease in profit for farmers, a waste of natural resources, and less food produced for our population. With enough imagination, these sweet potatoes can be pretty cute. Depending on what your imagination tells you, this sweet potato can look like either a turkey or pie, the famous number. And if we turn it upside down, it's a bunny. I should probably add some googly eyes to this bunny. But this cutie isn't going to make it onto the grocery store shelf. If I did not save this from the field, it was going to turn into waste. All of these shapes make agriculture fun and unpredictable. But when we go to the supermarket, we all expect to see homogeneous products displayed. We also want to find what we need for our recipes all year round. We might want sweet potato pie made from scratch in the middle of February, even though fresh sweet potatoes are harvested at the end of the warmer months. Luckily, in North Carolina, North Carolina State researchers have nailed it down storage strategies so that we can enjoy fresh sweet potatoes year round. Scientists and engineers like me partner with sweet potato growers to better understand the factors that affect sweet potato shape and size through agronomic, soil, and weather data analytics. Our hope is to nail down the production of standard shape sweet potato. And we're doing this by analyzing millions of sweet potato pictures, or data, and the information about where they're coming from and how they were grown. That's not the only way we use data in agriculture. The human population is growing at exponential rates. To feed our increasing population, we need to get smarter at maximizing the efficiency of our use of the natural resources in our planet to grow our vegetables, fruits, and grasses and grains to feed the animals that some of us like to put in our dinner tables. For farmers, this includes maximizing the type of food or feed that will give them the highest profit. But we're not on this planet alone. As responsible citizens of this planet, we should always help preserve our rich, diverse ecosystems and the different living species that coexist with us. Let's be honest, humans have continued to intervene with our natural resources for our own good and prosperity. Without giving much thought of the consequences to our ecosystems for our actions. We can see some of these consequences with the increases in extreme weather events such as hurricanes, melting icebergs, and rising sea levels. These extreme weather events not only impact our lives and households, but they also impact farming planning and the feasibility of getting food to our table at a reasonable price. One way that humans are getting smarter about the use of our natural resources and production of feed and food is with the power of data analytics for data-driven decisions in agriculture. Every year, in fact every day and every moment, we generate a lot of data in agriculture. Increasingly, 
farmers are adopting technologies that help collect data through satellite images, images taken from unpiloted aerial vehicles, sensors that are placed in the soil, directly in plants, or in conventional agricultural equipment. While massive amounts of data are collected that can help us better understand how plants react to the different climate and human-created stresses, processing data from various sources of information can take a lot of time for an already pretty busy farmer. And a lot of the time, an interface to easily store massive amounts of data is not readily available to a farmer. Farmers need to manage data to be able to access it when they want to make decisions about how to be more efficient and climate conscious producers of our food. Big data analysis paired with efficient visualizations and interpretation could be the key to understanding the complexities of biological systems and agronomy amidst a changing climate. This process of events is referred to as the life cycle of data or the supply chain of data. I started this talk with sweet potatoes because they are very important for rural economies in North Carolina. Another crop, corn, is an important agricultural product in our entire nation. Earlier, you imagined yourself at a grocery store. Now, think about when you're pumping gasoline at a gas station. Have you ever noticed the sign about ethanol? Fuel in U.S. pumps contain up to 10% of ethanol, and ethanol is actually made out of corn. Are you wondering if that corn is the same corn that feeds us and animals? The answer is yes. That same corn can be used to produce fuel that feeds our cars, airplanes, and cargo ships. The ethanol that you put in your car is made out of grains of corn. The reason why we have been able to develop efficient technologies to create fuel from grains of corn is because grains are flowable and they're very sweet. And in the world of chemistry, sugars means energy. So there's a lot of compacted flowable energy stored in grains. The problem though is that this use of corn competes with our demands for food and feed. So, Researchers like me are trying to use the other parts of the plant that also have levels of sugar, hence energy, to create a fuel bioeconomy that does not compete with feed and food. Our challenge is that this waste, also known as stover, is not as flowable nor dense. These qualities create an economic challenge when trying to deliver this product from geographically dispersed rural areas to a centralized facility for conversion to liquid fuel. Researchers posit that small collection facilities located near fields, which we call depots, could help alleviate this challenge. In these depots, stover or similar grasses would be densified into pellets. Once densified into pellets, corn stover could also be a part of the fuel supply in our gas pumps. But, like most new technologies, we researchers need to figure out the best ways to make a product efficient, sustainable, and resilient. And not only plants, pig, cow, and chicken poop also have great characteristics to fuel our cars but a more profitable product is created by converting poop to fertilizers, which otherwise would usually be petroleum-based. Guess what happens when you use fertilizers? In addition to the plants you want, you get weeds. Data analytics paired up with technological agricultural equipment like drones can be used to spot spray herbicides instead of spraying more widely from a larger vehicle or plane, which is more wasteful and less likely to end up only where you need it. We need various scientists, engineers, and researchers working in laboratories and field trials who need to work with farmers and industry experts along with consumer focus groups and government agencies, all of whom come together to create the farms of the future. Our goal is to create more efficient, sustainable, and resilient farms. But 
We need all hands on deck and we need more people to tackle this great challenge. We need talented, curious minds with a new perspective like yours to work in the intersection of agriculture and data analytics.